Hi students, good morning, welcome to another English class. Today we're gonna focus on to making a grammar review. Okay, so today we're gonna check what we have been doing during these weeks. Uh, first, let's check vocabulary related with activities. In this case, we have, let's repeat please, go sailing, go hiking, go sightseeing, go on a cruise, go on a safari, and go sun bathing. Let's repeat, go sailing, go hiking, go sightseeing, go sun bathing, go on a safari, or go on a cruise. As we can say, the verb go usually comes next to a sport or an activity. So this is so common to see the verb go uh, next to another verb in ing. That doesn't mean that this has the this has the work of a verb. In this case, this is a noun. Okay, so let's continue. Now let's make the grammar review. In this opportunity, we're gonna focus on going to. Let's remember that the going to is focused on the future time. Going to is related with the future. Here we have an example. We are going to go bowling tonight. Vamos a ir a jugar los bolos esta noche. Entonces, el going to, ¿en qué se enfocaba el going to? El going to básicamente era el tiempo futuro, pero enfocado en planes. No es cualquier tiempo futuro, es el tiempo futuro enfocado en planes. Básicamente significa ir a hacer algo. Yo voy a ir a estudiar, yo voy a ir a trabajar, I'm going to study, I'm going to travel, I'm going to work, I'm going to cook today. Uh, I'm going to clean the house. Yo voy a limpiar la casa. Yo voy a cocinar. Básicamente son planes. ¿Ok? Son planes que ya están previamente organizados. Tenemos las estructuras. Here we have the structure. The affirmative, the negative, and also the interrogative form. In this case, with affirmative, we have to remember that we're going to need the subject, verb to be, going to, plus another verb. With the negative, in this case, the verb to be is going to change. And with interrogative form, the verb to be is going to change the position with the subject. Entonces, con las estructuras del going to tenemos que tener en cuenta lo siguiente. Primero, vamos a trabajar con el sujeto, verbo to be, el going to, que es obligatorio que esté, y el verbo infinitivo. El verbo infinitivo es este. Por ejemplo, let me... so we're going to have a visit where paint. Estos son los verbos. Estos verbos están en forma infinitiva. ¿Qué significa? Que no sufren ningún cambio. No le podemos agregar ED, no se le agrega S. Están en su forma base. Eso significa un verbo en infinitivo. Y este verbo infinitivo va a ir inmediatamente después del to. Going to. Going to visit. En la forma negativa, recordemos que lo único que se altera es el verbo to be. En resumen, el verbo to be es el único que está en constante cambio para formar las diferentes estructuras. En afirmativo, se usa su respectivo verbo to be, ya sea is, are, o am. I am going to visit my sister. She is going to visit my sister. They are going to visit my sister. ¿Nos damos cuenta? El verbo to be es el que está en cambio. En la forma negativa, el verbo to be también va a cambiar, pero ahora en su forma negativa. Sara isn't going to wear a dress of the party. They aren't going to wear a dress of the party. I am not going to wear a dress of the party. Nos percatamos, el verbo to be cambia. En la forma interrogativa, el verbo to be también cambia, pero esta vez de posición. Are they going to paint their bedroom? Is she going to paint uh, her bedroom? I am going to paint my bedroom. Nos percatamos, el verbo to be es el que cambia, pero esta vez va a cambiar de posición. Porque siempre tenemos sujeto, verbo to be, sujeto, verbo to be. Ahora vamos a tener verbo to be y sujeto. Ok, let's continue. Ok, now here we have some examples. As I said before, the going to be is related with plans. For example, first we take the decision. And then we are going to make that action in the future. This is a plan. This is an intention. In summer, I'm going to travel to Hawaii. En verano voy a viajar a Hawaii. 
Now, this starts some example. Mike is going to pass the first year. Our team is not going to win. Uh, is Corin going to buy a new car? No, he isn't. Here we have the verb to be in the present. In this case, let's remember we have am, are, and is. I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, you are, and they are. Cada verbo to be se conjuga específicamente con negativo o con interrogativo. Now, here we have the comparative and also the superlative form. In this structure, we have to remember the main difference between them. Vamos a recordar las principales diferencias entre estos dos. Primero, en la forma comparativa. ¿Cuál es? La forma comparativa se va a relacionar o va a estar relacionada con la regla de la R y more. Let's write right here. So, with comparative sentence, you're going to have the ER and also we're going to have the more rule. Estas son las reglas básicamente. ¿Y cuándo vamos a aplicar este tipo de reglas con los comparativos? Los comparativos primero, como su nombre mismo lo dice, nos ayudan a comparar o dos objetos. We're going to compare differences between two objects, two animals, two persons. Y estos adjetivos, porque los comparativos trabajan con adjetivos, son modificados. ¿Qué significa? Si tenemos, por ejemplo, el adjetivo small. Aquí tenemos small. Para que sea comparativo, le añadimos R, smaller. Nos percatamos, aquí ya han añadido, añadido el R, smaller. Small significa pequeño. Al decir smaller, sería más pequeño. Este R le añade ese significado de más a nuestros adjetivos. Large, grande. Larger, más grande. Small, pequeño. Smaller, más pequeño. Fast, rápido. Faster, más rápido. High, alto. Higher, más alto. Más alto que, porque estamos comparando. Es por eso que es importante que esté presente el dan, porque significa que the, the mouse is smaller than the all. Por el otro lado, con los superlativos, trabajan con la regla del est. O con la regla del most. Algo que se me había olvidado es que cuando utilizamos la regla del more es con los adjetivos grandes. El er es con los adjetivos pequeños. El more es con los adjetivos grandes que van a partir de dos sílabas a más. Lo que pasa, por ejemplo, con el adjetivo expensive, caro. Podemos comparar, por ejemplo, eh, un celular Samsung con un iPhone. ¿Cuál sería más caro? El iPhone. Entonces podríamos decir... The iPhone is more expensive than the Samsung cell phone. El iPhone es más caro que el celular eh, Samsung. Ok? Now, with the superlative, we have the same rules. Tenemos la misma regla, básicamente. Añadimos es al final cuando es un adjetivo pequeño y añadimos most o the most cuando es un adjetivo grande. En esta ocasión, el superlativo va a resaltar a uno solo de un grupo. No va a comparar. Va a resaltar a un individuo, a un animal, a un objeto de un grupo. Siempre va a ser así. The superlatives are used to describe an object with it, which is of the upper or lower limit of quality. We have to remember that. This is of the upper or lower. Es el más. Es el más que todos los demás. O sea, puede ser que sea el más grande, el más pequeño. Va a ser tal vez el más rápido, el más lento. Siempre va a ser el más dentro de un grupo. Let's continue. So, here we're going to have some comparative and superlatives. Let's remember the main rules. For example, we have heavy, it's the adjective. Heavier, it's the comparative. Heaviest, it's the superlative. Old, Older, oldest. Fast, faster, the fast. Strong, stronger, strongest. Short, shorter, shortest. Funny, funnier, funniest. Now, here we have the grammar rules. Tenemos las reglas de gramática. Básicamente, estas reglas se van a basar en lo siguiente. Adjetivos pequeños, como todo, le agregamos ER cuando es comparativo y le agregamos 
es cuando es superlativo. Recordemos que con los superlativos trabajan con el artículo the. The tallest. ¿Por qué? Porque decimos el más alto, el más grande, el más pequeño. Y ese él es un artículo. Por eso que en inglés también trabajamos con un artículo. The tallest. Eh, con los adjetivos también que tenemos que tener cuidado es con los que terminan en Y. Y sobre todo si tienen dos sílabas. ¿Por qué? Porque ese Y se elimina y agregamos R en el caso que sea comparativo. Happy, happier. Con superlativos, happy, the happiest. Con los que tienen de dos sílabas a más, en este caso con comparativos, añadimos more, more dangerous. Con superlativo agregamos the most, the most dangerous. Y con los que son irregulares, que son un grupo muy reducido, pero que se tiene que tener en cuenta como good o bad, vamos a tener que aplicar better o worse para comparativos y the best o the worst para superlativos. Con estos dos no se aplica ninguna regla. Estos simplemente cambian su estructura. Now, here we have the topic that we have did some weeks ago. This topic is related about the modal verbs. Son los modal verbs, los verbos modales. Recordemos que aprendimos el modal verb must o mustn't. Must se enfocaba en hacer obligaciones. Mustn't en hacer prohibiciones. Must, debes. Mustn't, no debes hacer algo. Must. She must phone her father immediately. Ella debe llamar a su papá inmediatamente. Una obligación. Mustn't. Algo prohibido. You are not allowed to do this thing. No estás permitido hacer esto. You mustn't use the phone after midnight. No debes usar el teléfono después de medianoche. Es una prohibición. En este caso en casa. Tenemos otro modal verb. En este caso nosotros nos hemos enfocado en el uso de habilidades y también de permiso. El modal verb que vamos a tener va a ser can and could. Cool. Can, puedes. Could, podías. Can is used for the present time and could for the past tense. Can, puedes. I can speak four languages. Puedo hablar cuatro idiomas. Could, ability related with the past. He could play football when he was a kid. Él podía jugar fútbol cuando él era un niño. ¿Nos damos cuenta? Habilidad del tiempo pasado, habilidad del tiempo presente. Otro detalle con los modal verbs tanto como must, como can o could, es que un modal verb cuando está presente, let me erase something, cuando un modal verb está presente, el verbo no cambia. Nos percatamos, speak, play, take, use, nuestro modal verb no ha cambiado y no ha sido alterado por ningún motivo. Lo mismo va a pasar con el mismo modal verb, el modal verb tampoco va a cambiar. No podemos decir can't. Tampoco puedo decir can it. That's impossible. I can speak for language. Could play. También lo vamos a emplear para el posibilidades. Algo que puede ser posible. Alcohol can cause cancer. A lot of crime could be prevented. With permission. En el caso de los permisos, si bien es muy importante definirlos por su tiempo, tiempo presente o tiempo pasado, en permisos se van a diferenciar más que nada por la, el nivel de formalidad. ¿Qué significa? Can va a ser más informal que could. Can lo vamos a emplear en situaciones más informales. Cuando pedimos permiso, por ejemplo, a nuestros padres. Can I use your book, please? With permission, could I take your book, please? So that's all for this month. Now we have to practice. Okay, now in this case we have to practice. In this case we have coronavirus rules. We have to use must or mustn't. Vamos a emplear los modal verb. El modal verb en este caso debes o no debes hacer es algo. Eh, para obligación y para prohibición. Let's analyze the pictures and then we have to complete. We have you wash your hands for 20 seconds. You must or you mustn't. In this case, it's must. You must wash your hands. You use your elbow when you call for sneeze. Elbow, you know, eh, usar tu antebrazo cuando toses o estornudas. Call for sneeze. In this case, it's you must, because we have to prevent some disease. You wear a face mask. In Peru, this is 
obligatory. So you must. You clean and disinfect your house. In this case, it's also uh, obligatory, but depend on the responsibility of every family. In this case, let's use must. You touch your eyes, nose, and mouth. Touch your eyes, nose, and mouth when you are on the street. That's a little bit dangerous. How so you mustn't. You mustn't touch your eyes, nose, and mouth. You stay away from sick people. In this case, this is obligatory, so you must stay away. Mantenerte alejado. Debes mantenerte alejado. You stay at home. Yes, you must stay at home. You meet all people. In this case, you mustn't because it's dangerous for, in this case, for all people and also for you. You eat healthy food. In this case, is this? Obviously, you must eat healthy food to be healthy. Uh, you go outside. Go outside, go to the playground. In this case, no, that's not possible. You mustn't go outside. In these times, you go to bed late. In this case, this is uh, not so important, but if you are studying, you mustn't go to bed late. You exercise. Yes, of course, you must exercise. This is so important for your health. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, now this, this exercise is focusing on using the modal verb can. Let's remember that we're going to have three forms of this modal verb. We're going to have can, four actually, can't, could, or couldn't. Affirmative and negative form, affirmative and negative form, okay? So, now, using this, in this case, uh, using this sentence and also using these words, we have to complete right here. Let's remember, could and couldn't is for past tense, can and can't is for present tense, okay? Past and present. We have I sleep last night. It was so hot. We have some keywords. Tenemos algunas palabras claves. Eh, permítanme aclarar que es muy importante eh, reconocer estas palabras claves o estos verbos para saber cuál vamos a emplear. ¿Por qué? Si el verbo está en pasado, obviamente debemos emplear algún modal verb del tiempo pasado. Sobre todo con los detalles que nos dan extra dentro de la oración. ¿Ok? Detalles extras. Verbo en pasado, modo verbo en pasado. Si los verbos y tal vez algún adverbio de frecuencia estén presente, debemos emplear el, el can o can't en el tiempo presente. Ok, so let's analyze. Uh, we have sleep last night. It was so hot. Tenemos was. We have was. Was in the past tense. So, it was so hot. You sleep. So, that means that you couldn't sleep in this case. So you couldn't sleep. Why? Because it was so hot. No podías dormir. Hacía mucho calor. When I was five or six, when I was a little child, I do a handstand. But I now, now it's the present. This sentence is with the past. A handstand. Caerse de manos. So in this case, I could because it's the past. I could do a handstand, but I can't. I can't now. Why? Yo no puedo ahora. ¿Por qué? Porque básicamente el could va a estar relacionado al tiempo, al tiempo pasado, porque aquí dice cuando tenía seis, pero ahora tenemos el now presente, tenemos que usar can't. My grandfather, my late grandfather, speak French. And my father say a few words of Spanish. So, in this case, this is related with the present. So, my late grandfather can, in this case, can speak French. And my father can say, also, can say 
a few words of Spanish. I speak anything but English. I can. In this case, I can't speak anything, you know. So let's say I can't speak anything but in English, not in French or Spanish. The next one we have we are having a dinner party next Saturday. But Roger, but Roger, in this case, can home. It's related with the future in this case because the next Saturday is not the past. The next Saturday, el próximo sábado. But Roger can't home, no puede venir. When I met Daniel last year, he, last year, he was terrified of the water. Now he swim like a fish. What does it mean that he couldn't swim uh, the last year? So he couldn't couldn't swim he was terrified of the water now he can swim like a fish okay good the next one we have I finished my lunch today I just wasn't hungry at all I wasn't hungry no tenía hambre so you finish or you didn't finish your lunch in this case I can or I couldn't because it's in the past I couldn't finish my lunch today. I wasn't hungry. This is the past. No tenía hambre. Por lo tanto, no terminé la, en la comida. There are so many different, different ice creams to choose from. I can decide. You choose for me. In this case, is this is some... Um, Person that in this case doesn't want to choose his or her own ice cream, so he can't because he said, You choose for me, elige for me. I can't decide. I find Bing and then I found him in the garden. I can't in this case. I couldn't because found is in the past. So is I couldn't. I couldn't find Ben and then I found him in the garden. Now I can't find because he's in the present. Now I can't find him again. He keeps disappear. Okay, let's continue on also making the last exercise. Okay, so this is the last exercise. In this case, we have to remember how to use going to. Okay, we're gonna have this sentence. Let's remember. Okay, we're gonna have, for example, uh, it is going to rain, by your ver. They, it's you. In this case, this is an affirmative. They, con que verbo tu viva? Con are. They are. Okay, this is not enough space. Let's write right here the answer. They are going to eat. They are going to eat stew. Recordemos, subject, verb to be, going to, y luego el verbo principal. I am going to, you are going to, he is going to, they are going to. Okay, I. Blue shoes tonight. In this case, I, con que verbo to be va? And. Colocamos el going to, que es el protocolo. I'm going to wear blue shoes tonight. The next one, number four. We have a negative sentence. Negative sentence. So, we have to use the negative sentence. We have to use the negative form of the verb to be. So, we are, aren't, because it's the negative. We aren't going to help you. Te vamos a ayudar. Jack, no walk home. It's a negative also. Jack, ¿con qué verbo tu viva? Con is. La forma negativa del is, isn't. Jack, isn't going to walk home. The next one. Cook you dinner. This is a question. With question, let's remember that the subject is going to change place with the verb to be. 
What is the subject? Is you. ¿Cuál es el verbo to be de you? Are. Are you. Y luego seguimos con el protocolo. Going to o con la estructura tradicional, en otras palabras. Are you going to cook dinner? The next one, we have Sue, her biscuits. Sue, we have a negative. So, Sue isn't, isn't going to share her biscuits. The next one, we have the house, live and they. We have the subject, they, con las preguntas, cambiaba de posición, entonces va a ser, are they? Going to leave the house. Here we have also another question. In the contest, take part. She, y tenemos el verbo take part. Primero, trabajamos con el verbo to be. Entonces, is she going to take part? Is she going to take part in the contest? Va a formar parte del, con del concurso. I... Not spent my holiday abroad this year. So, I am not going to spend my holiday abroad this year. So, that's all for today, class. Thank you for your attention. Please take it a lot. Stay at home. Bye.